Hey guys, Scott from Fry Props here, and this video is another one prompted by a question from a customer. We had a customer write to us and he wanted to use an RFID to open a mag lock, but then once the RFID was triggered a second time, he wanted the mag lock to lock again. And he wanted that to alternate, so the first scan opens the lock, second scan locks it, third scan opens it again, fourth scan locks it, and so on. So here's the setup we came up with for that. We have here our magnetic lock, we have a Peekaboo MP3, which is the controller we'll be using for this, and we have our RFID. This is the relay for the RFID unit, and this is the antenna, which will activate when we place a chip near it with the correct code. So let's just go ahead and demonstrate how it works. Right now, you can see that the lock is locked. If I scan the chip once, the lock will open. You notice that it will stay open even if I try to lock it again. If I scan the same chip again, the lock will now lock. It will stay locked indefinitely until somebody scans that same chip, in which case it will open. And again, another scan will lock it. So we're going to take a look at the programming side of this in a second. We're using Director to program this. It's another good example of how you can use Director with a controller like a Peekaboo MP3. But let's take a quick look at the wiring here so we can just kind of give you an example of how this is all wired up. All right, so I just wanted to zoom in here to take a real quick look at the wiring that we have going on here. As you can see, the Peekaboo MP3 has two trigger inputs. Um, each one shares this common terminal here, and then there's a one and a two for the two different trigger inputs you have available. We're using trigger input one, and we're also on the left here using output one to control the magnetic lock. So we'll start with our wires from our magnetic lock, which comes in here at the left. The positive wire comes down to that first output, and it's in the normally closed terminal, meaning that when the uh, relay is in its normal position, the circuit is closed, so power is flowing to the lock, keeping it engaged. The negative wire comes up here to the negative terminal for our power. You'll notice there are several wires there. The other wires going into the negative terminal are coming from the RFID power, which are these two wires here. So this is the negative and positive wire for the RFID unit to actually keep it powered. Negative is going to the negative terminal here, positive to positive. The final uh, negative wire is coming from the relay for the RFID. You can see here that just like the output relay, there are three terminals, NO, C, and NC. We're using the normally open terminal, so we have one wire coming from the normally open terminal going into the negative terminal of our power. The other wire on the relay goes from the common over to the number one input on our trigger inputs. For the positive terminal here, again, we have our power for the RFID unit, positive power here. We have a jumper heading out over to the common terminal on the output here for output one. And then we also have a jumper jumping from positive over to the common terminal for the trigger inputs here. All right, so that's just a quick look at the wiring power powering the RFID unit, also triggering input one with the relay here and controlling the magnetic lock with output one here. All right, so let's hop over to the PC. We'll open up Director and we'll show you the programming for this effect. Okay, here we are over at the PC. I'm gonna open up Director here. And we're going to make it full screen and we'll get started. So we're going to go to File and we're going to create a new show. For our controller, we're gonna select the Peekaboo MP3 and hit Select. We already have a show uh, titled Untitled, so that's fine, we're just gonna replace it and hit Yes. And this will open up our programming window. So if you're new to Director, essentially what you have here are different shows for each of the modes of the controller. So as you can see here, the Peekaboo MP3 has an ambient mode. This would be an animation or audio that's uh, occurring while the controller is at rest, not being triggered. And it also has two scenes available for the uh, two inputs, input one and input two. We're only using input one, and we actually don't want any ambient animation. Using ambient animation in this case will actually create uh, a problem with the effect. So we're gonna go ahead to input one here, and this is going to be our first scene under input one. So it's scene input one dash zero, and we'll add another scene in just a moment. So this is the scene that's going to play when the controller is first triggered on input one. So what we want to do is actually just take our little record bar here. Again, if you're new to Director, it's a timeline-based programming software. So we're just gonna drag out our uh, record here, and that's gonna give us our options here. And now that we have our field to play in here, we can actually uh, turn inputs on and off just by clicking and dragging. 
when the field here is blue, that means the output is on. When it's white, it means it's off. Uh, clicking and dragging in the blue that you've created will erase it. So that's how you can easily uh, turn inputs on and off for certain durations and at certain times across your timeline here. Extending the uh, record line will make your scene longer. So we actually just need a very short scene. It can actually be just a few seconds. Um, so we're just going to keep it kind of here towards the end. And we're going to turn output one on for the entire duration. We want to make sure that input one is on in the final frame of the animation. And there's a couple ways to do that. We can either zoom all the way in. I'm just clicking the zoom in button here until you see the individual cells. As you can see here, now we can just click to turn cells on and off. This is the uh, most finite increment of time that you can control with the Peekaboo MP3 Indirector. So we could either do this and just click to make sure they're all filled, or if you're zoomed out um, and you don't actually care about the specific length of the scene, another thing you can do is just click and drag your timeline back into the blue and release it. So that makes sure that the um, timeline is completely filled with this output being on from start all the way until finish. And what that's going to do is it's going to actually tell the controller that when it finishes this scene, as long as there's no animation in that ambient scene, it should just stay in its current state. It'll just stay with this input being on. So this is what's going to happen when you first scan that RFID chip. It's going to turn output one on, and because we have the uh, mag lock wired through normally closed, that's actually going to switch the relay, open it off, and turn the mag lock off as far as power is concerned. Now, what we want to do is have the next time you scan that same chip, we want the opposite to happen. We want the output to turn off. So to do that, we're just going to go up to our scenes here. I'm going to click, and I'm going to go Manage Scenes. And I'm going to go to our input one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a scene below. So now I've actually added another scene under our input one here. And so we have input 1-0, and now we're going to have input 1-1. And I'll click OK. Now you can see when I go to our scenes again and click the drop down here, we have now input 1-1, whereas before we only had input 1-0. So this is our second scene under input 1. I'm going to click here, and you can see everything resets. We're going to do the same thing we did earlier, but all I'm going to do is I'm just going to click and drag out and release. Uh, this scene, again, doesn't matter how long it is, so we can take this and we can make it as short as we like. I just want to make sure that there's no animation here. I want to make sure that output 1 is completely off for the entire duration of the scene and that it ends off uh, once the, it hits this record line here. That, again, is going to mean that when this scene ends, because there's no ambient animation for it to go back to, it's just going to stay where it is. It's going to stay open. And that's essentially it. We've done the entire program. We basically now have a sort of flip-flopping uh, output situation going on based on the trigger input for input one. So once we're done with that, we can just click Export here, export it to our SD card, put that in the controller, and we're good to go. All right, so that's a quick look at a scenario that was inspired by a customer question. Uh, we love getting questions from people trying to do interesting things. So if you have a situation where you're not sure how to do something, you can leave a comment on this video, or as always, you can send us an email at sales at Thanks a lot.